Thank you for listening to The Freddie O Show, a podcast devoted to you, the listener, your purpose, your mindset, and your marketing efforts designed to help you go to that next level. Now, here's your host, Freddie O. Super excited to have Kimberly Melusis on board today. Welcome to The Freddie O Show. So great to be here. Thanks for having me. So let's get the engine started by telling us who is Kimberly Melusis. Well, that's a big question. I'm a lot of things. But <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'm still figuring that out. But from a, from a business perspective, I am an entrepreneur. I am a Canadian founder and a presidential diamond leader with doTERRA. I'm an abundance coach and I'm a mom to four awesome kids and 15 chickens. Can I be a chicken mom too? Does that count? You're a chicken mom. Yes. I'm a chicken mom. <laughs> <laughs> so you have 15 chickens? I do. Yeah, oh, that's cool. They're babies still, but they're getting there. Very cool. Okay, so um, now you're you talk about helping people let go of lack and embrace life of abundance, a life of abundance. Mm-hmm. Um, can you ex- like, let's dig deeper into that? Because, like for instance, like let go of lack. Yeah. What does that mean? And then embrace a life of abundance. Obviously, a lot of people know what that is, but what is your definition? Oh, that's such a great question. So you know, my perspective is that. Uh, there's so much available to every person and we get to have the opportunity every single day to create what that day is going to look like and therefore what our future is going to look like by the choices we make and and you know less choices in a whole lot of areas this choices with our physical health with our mental health with our spiritual health and even with our financial health and when I look at a lot of the population, what I see is sometimes people hang on to lack as if it's a badge of honor. You know, like I, I've got this sickness and I've got that sickness and I've got this illness and this condition. And it's almost like people define themselves by what they lack. You know, they're lacking money or they're lacking health or and it, and it becomes like this badge. And my goal is to help people shed that need to hang on to those things to either get attention or, you know, because their their identity has been connected to this sense of lack, to shed that and to then move toward understanding that abundance is available to them. And I'll tell you, when I, when I started um, this whole journey toward helping people create abundance, it started with my business. And I'll give you an example. So in my business, I teach people about essential oils and we always joke, I have an oil for that. You know, so no matter what your issue is, we always joke, well, I have an oil for that. And for the most part, we do. But what would happen is people would come to me and they would have like a laundry list of stuff that they're dealing with. You know, they had headaches, they had fibromyalgia, they had heart disease, hypertension, you know, diabetes, chronic fatigue, like you name it. And they, they would have this list and then inevitably there would be the same question. And the question was, what oil can I use? And I would pause and I'd say, dude, you're expecting a lot out of an oil. You know, you made a lot of bad choices to get to where you are. Don't expect one little magic oil to fix everything. And so I wanted to be able to communicate to my customers and let them know that it's going to require a bigger approach. It requires, you know, looking at what you're eating, looking at how you're moving your body, looking at what thoughts are you allowing in your mind. The relationship health, you know, emotional health, a lot of disease is actually caused from misplaced emotion, like negative emotions. And so there's a bigger picture. And as I started communicating that, that's when I came up with Life More Abundantly, because I want people to know that here I am, 50 years old, and as I reflect upon my life, what I see is that I'm actually more healthy physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually than at any other time in my life. And I believe that people are meant to go from glory to glory, to you know have greater levels of abundance, and they can walk in it, but it will require that they make certain choices. So let's let's I'm gonna take a step back real quick and let's let's use like a scenario person, okay? So let's say somebody that is all jacked up, you know, as far as because, you know, they're at the lower end of the spectrum as far as mental health. Mm -hmm. So how would you approach that? You know, because a lot of times people try to jump into the deep end Mm -hmm. without having they try all this stuff at one time. (laughs) So what would you say is the most the best, the most critical thing that they need to start on first? 
Well, I have two ways of, of dealing with this. One would be like if, in my course, for example. So I have a 10-week course, covers 10 areas of your life where you can achieve abundance. And I say at the beginning of that course, like to try to get all 10 at one time is way too much. And so I tell people, go go through the whole course and then circle back and really focus on the one. But at the beginning, I have them go through a, what I call an abundant circle. And they're kind of rating their themselves on, on a scale of one to 10 in various areas of their lives. And what makes the most sense is, of course, the ones that are at the lowest, you, you want to kind of address those first. And so if, for example, someone comes to me with a physical need, but their relationships are all out of whack, you know, in my abundance course, I would say focus on relationships, you know, work through forgiveness, work through, you know, uh, critical conversations with people. And so those are the areas that I would say to address. If somebody were to come to me with my business and and not my course, and they would ask me, you know, well, what do I do? I always ask them this question, which is, how committed are you to the process? Because I can work with anybody at any level of where they're at. So two exact same people or, you know, exact same situations, one person may be willing to go through the whole, I'm going to do a cleanse, I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to, you know, start exercising. One person might be at that place. The other person, maybe all I can do is say, are you willing to give up McDonald's for a month, you know? And I yeah. start there. And so I believe that I, I I have a spiritual mentor that I, she doesn't even know who I am, but I read all her her books. And one of the things that I heard her say at a conference I was at was anything that's worth doing is worth doing poorly. And so I always keep that in my mind. You know, you don't have to achieve perfection. Just take one step and then another and then another. Like baby steps, just move forward. Exactly. Something if you're not growing, you're dying. That's what my pastor used to always say. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. now the, a lot of times, with the, when you talk about a day, you know, and there's, we talked about Facebook before we get on here. You can't stand Facebook. One of the reasons why I limit Facebook, I use Facebook for business, but I limit it big time, especially the news feed is because of negativity mm -hmm. and what, what you put in your brain. But you see a lot of like people that are just the way they handle their struggle is they put all their news on the front page yeah. mm -hmm. and it's just like, it's mind numbing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is the way that you start your day. So what is your morning routine like? Yeah, that's absolutely critical. So one of the, the um, concepts that I really try to embrace in my life and try to communicate to those that I mentor is the authority that we have as human beings. Some people sell off their authority because they don't understand that they have it. And every day when you put your feet on the ground and even before you do, like when you're lying in your bed awake, you start your day by deciding who you're going to give your authority to that day because you're always giving your authority somewhere. You're either going to give your authority to empower what I would call the dark side, right? Um, negative thoughts, you know, lies, um, hatred, anger. You're either going to put your authority and your power there or you're going to put your authority into building a greater kingdom, the kingdom of light and love and hope and joy. And before you start your day, you decide. You have the ability to put your authority um, because everything in this life is based on authority. People don't understand that they're hugely powerful and where you put your power matters. So I start my day with declarations. Today, and, and it's so funny because I've trained my son to do the same thing and he'll often come to me and he'll say, Mommy, I've got good news. Today is a good day. And this is at the beginning of the day before it's even started because we... I've trained him to teach, the, to, to know that declaring your day ahead of time is absolutely critical. So I declare what I want to see of this day. I declare who I am. And if I have specific things that I want to accomplish in that day that I want to achieve, I make sure that I include that in my declarations. Fantastic. So basically you're, you're telling yourself, this is what's going to happen because mm -hmm. exactly. you're in charge. We are in charge. And you have the, the, the choice of if you have a negative friend to either a uh, talk to them and try to help them or B, if they don't listen, you know what? Bam. I love you, but it's time to switch gears and uh, hasta la vista in a nice way. But I, I get your 
point. You can basically, you have complete and total authority of what you do during that day. Absolutely. Yep. And boundaries are critical. And what was that again? Batteries? Yeah, boundaries. Boundaries. I thought you said batteries. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we recharge our batteries, but yeah, boundaries, boundaries are critical. Okay. Very cool. So go deeper into that. When you say boundaries are critical, what do you mean by that? So let you talked about your negative friend, right? So yes. my perspective is that I am not here to control anybody because I just finished saying that we are powerful people. Every single person is a powerful person. Some people don't recognize that they're powerful, but everybody is. And the last thing that I want to do is to use my power to try to overpower somebody else. What I need to do is to inspire them, to encourage them, to correct and guide them to the extent that they're they're willing to be guided. And if they're open to hearing what I have to say that would counteract some of the negativity that they've been experiencing or that they're feeling, then that's awesome. But, you know, if I've had conversations with somebody, for example, somebody I'm mentoring and, you know, I have conversations with them and at the end of, you know, several conversations, they're still stuck on their track. Well, that's where I put a boundary because I can't control them. But what I can control is me. I can control my time. I can control my energy and I can control my resources. And so I don't want to invest my time, my energy and resources in a place that's not fruitful. And so then I would have that critical conversation. And I do this with my team members all the time. If they're not staying in action and building their business, no problem. When you're ready, I'll be here for you. you. But until then, I'm going to put my boundary in and use my resources elsewhere. Yeah, and I was going to switch gears and go into that other passion of yours. You know, your online business and you are the presidential diamond uh, in doTERRA. That is the top of the line, right? Top. uh, Yeah, the, the the grand poobah grand poobah you're the grand poobah on doTERRA so um so at first the concept of multi-level marketing wasn't too enticing for you at all how did that change oh gosh yeah i was you know on my background i'm a cpa tax specialist uh senior corporate tax manager at price waterhouse coopers that's how i identified myself that's how i you know got my value was having those labels and i prided myself on being a very competent businesswoman. And I had people, friends, you know, uh, people who knew me always approaching me with one business opportunity after another with direct sales. And I had a really bad taste in my mouth, primarily because I had people doing the switch and bait, you know, so they would invite me over for a tea and suddenly this presentation comes out and I'm seeing, you know, big, big houses and pictures of this and that. And I was like, where did this come from? This is not what I thought I was here for. So I had a really bad taste in my mouth. I made judgments about multi-level marketing uh, people and company. And what I started to recognize uh, was that, you know, when I looked at the multi-level marketing, I needed to look at it as a vehicle and I needed to assess it as a vehicle. Because if we look at an airplane, And I was to ask the average person, is an airplane good or is an airplane bad? Well, they would say, well, an airplane's good. And I said, well, what about at 9-11? Somebody used an airplane to go into a building and to create, you know, untold destruction. In that case, was it used in a bad way or a good way? It was used in a bad way. So it's not the vehicle itself that's good or bad. It's how it's used. And so what I experienced in the past was people using multi-level marketing or direct sales in a bad way. And what I needed to do was to reinvent how I could use this to empower people. And that's exactly what I do now. And I think a lot of it for me with when I first got in this industry, I realized like we talked about the dark side and the light side. The dark side is get rich quick, doesn't take any work, uh, you know, and then the promise is not delivered. I think more so promise is not delivered when, you know, you get somebody on your team and you say, oh, you're going to, you're going to make this amount of money, you know, your first week and they don't, and they're like all bent out of shape. Yeah. It's the way you present it, but it's also up to like your team build. I'm not a big team builder. Uh, doesn't mean I can't be, I just never have been. Yeah. Uh, it is a necessity in what you do. Yeah, so like, For instance, how do you keep your team motivated? Oh, that's a big question. So um, I want to come back just before I say about the motivation. I want to say team building. The reason why it's so important is because I believe that people do multi-level marketing wrong. 
I mean, if we understand the power of a really good multi-level marketing company with a really good product, we have the power to create, you know, powerful source of residual income. But most people don't do it the right way. And so I always ask people this question when they start with me and I say, what is the purpose of an apple tree? And their answer usually is to make apples. And I tell them, wrong. (laughs) And if you get the right answer, this will make you a powerful and effective leader creating powerful residual income with doTERRA. Because the absolute uh, ultimate reason for an apple tree or purpose of an apple tree is not to produce apples, even though that is something that happens, but it's to produce another apple tree. Because if it only produced apples and never produced another apple tree, well, soon we would have no more apples in the world once that tree died. But if it produces an orchard, we have, you know, constant multiplication. And so you do need to raise up a team. You do need to raise up leaders. And if you can do it the right way, that's how you can create residual income. Okay. So with that being said, Mm -hmm. what would you say is your secret technique on doing that the right way? So I would say it's a combination of a couple of things. One is, is training. I mean, absolutely. The training process should be streamlined and should be really clear to everybody on my team. And it is. So anytime that somebody starts on my team, um, they, I know exactly what to do. I know they're going to do this and then they're going to do this and then they're going to do this. And all of my team members also know exactly what these people are supposed to be going through to learn the basics. Now the basics is is the is the what they're going to do. It doesn't address the mindset, which is like ninety five percent of what they're going to have to do. But it at least addresses the what and the how, right? Yes. Um, so streamline training absolutely critical. That's the first thing. The second thing is to see in people what what they have as strengths and to call them into being. I believe that the power of life and death is in the tongue and we can use our tongues to, to tear people down and to tell them what they're doing wrong and what's, what's wrong with them. Or we can see with different set of eyes, we can see the capabilities that they have, which are unique. No two people are going to be the same. And as we look at that person and we call those things to life, you're going to see that the right people will make the choices to become the very thing that you're calling out of them. And so I, you know, this is how I keep my team motivated as well as I put a picture before them of what's possible and I inspire them that it's, that it is possible by doing it myself. And then I call out of them the greatness that they have within them to actually um, make it happen. Yeah. So you basically, you're, you encourage them to use the gifts they have. Absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. And I think that's good because I I 100% believe in the power of the tongue. Uh, I've always been told that, you know, Fred, you're an encourager, this, that, and the other. And, but sometimes, like you said, investing in the wrong things, uh, that's, that's hurt me in the past as far as trying to change someone else when if they don't want to change themselves, I'm spinning my wheels. It's a waste of time. Yeah, that's but good. and it's good that you that that you encourage people. And so if you if you if eh, if you're building a team right now, and if you're part of an MLM mm-hmm. uh, right now, it, you know you're part of DoTerra, but a lot of ML, M, MLMs are out there. I can't speak today, so mm-hmm. MLMs are out there. It, that's a great way of putting it. Is you you invest in people with more than just saying, Hey, join my team. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I love the way that you talk about streamline training because a lot of times, and here's a, here's a deal, a lot of training out there, because when I first got into the industry back in 2012, I was in a a few MLMs. Okay. So that left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and the training was absolutely terrible. And, you know, like, cause I can't stand seeing, uh, like, people just posting the same thing on their wall, no. boom, boom. But if they, they think that's going to work no. and human interaction is key, especially with multi-level marketing. Yeah. So what are your, uh, would you say your top, I was going to ask you what your top three marketing strategies were into building your business, but we talked a little earlier, you don't use a lot of social media. No, I'm not a big social media person, which, which I hope is an encouragement to people because 
Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people believe that you have to be big on social media in order to build a direct sales business. And I like to point out that actually the top person in doTERRA who is like uh, above me, several layers above me, um, she couldn't even send an email three years into her business. Her husband did it all. So, so it encouraged me because I thought, wow, you know, there are people who build really well using social media and all that kind of stuff. But it's nice to know that good old fashioned talking to people actually works, too. So that's your number one marketing strategy, just being yourself, talking to people and presenting the opportunity. Yeah, I feel like, you know, if if I was to give advice to people who are looking to build a direct sales business, and remember, it is called network marketing for a reason, because it's about networking. But I say the number one best thing you can do is to learn to listen. Um, if you are meeting somebody for the first time and your first approach to them is, um, hi, what, you know, what do you do? And, and then they tell you what, what they do. And then they ask you, well, what do you do? And then you go into like a half an hour spiel about your product and about your business. And at the end, it's like, hey, you want to buy some product? Want to join my team? Yeah. <laughs> like, you just lost somebody right away because you're not listening. And so if you spend a half an hour talking to somebody and you're just really good at asking questions, just like you are, you know, you're, you're asking questions of me, but if you're just really good at asking questions and every time that they ask you about yourself, because inevitably that's what people do is they start feeling like, Oh, I'm talking about myself too much. You just keep the focus back on them to say, well, we'll talk about me afterwards, but I'm really interested in what you just said. Tell me more about whatever. And, you know, half an hour of that. And I'll tell you, if you don't figure out at the end of that, a financial need, a, a health need, an emotional need, then you haven't asked the right questions or you're talking to a robot because everybody in the half an hour or 20 minutes is going to be expressing one of those needs. And in my business, I mean, what I do is I help people with their physical needs, their emotional needs and their financial needs. So I'm able to help them. Because true sales is serving. I never need to be afraid of being pushy or quote unquote salesy, which isn't a word, but I, I don't, I'm not worried about being salesy because if my goal is to serve and my goal is to help them meet their needs with something that I have, then I can't go wrong. hundred percent. And I, I, I can't stand being salesy. No. That really isn't a word, salesy. I thought salesy was a word. I just like saying salesy. No, I, I here, here's the thing. When I when I do, uh, if I'm potentially going to have a client for a funnel build, uh, I let them talk to me. I don't, you know, like push. I, I see what their I see what their issues are, and then I give them the solution uh -huh. to what it could be. But if they said no, I'm all good with that, yeah. and because. Uh, it just, it is what it is at that point in time. It is what it is. But yet I want to make sure that they understand this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make sure that it, you know, a lot of people have been, you know, screwed over in the past with anything life. Sometimes, you know, it can be rough and people lie to you. So they're going to have that bad taste in your mouth in their mouth, no matter what. But if you can let them get to know, like, and trust you, Absolutely. And to realize that you have their best interests in mind and you're going to serve them well, then they're definitely going to going to go with you. Because here's a good example. We, my wife, first got married. We've been married 22 years. Wow. And we were looking for TV when we were first started getting together. Went to Best Buy. Do they have Best Buys in Canada? They do, right? They do. Yeah, yeah they do. Okay. Um, went to Best Buy and looking for TVs. Nobody was helping us out. And so we left. Uh and then we went to Circuit City, which they don't have around anymore, but we went there and guy came up, answered all of our questions. TV was a little bit more expensive, but why did we buy from there? Because we had great service. Exactly. So, so in other words, give your clients, team members, whoever you're dealing with, great service, and they will keep on coming back for more. So uh, your course, How to Cultivate an Abundance Mindset, um, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, it's actually called Life More Abundantly. And oh, okay. Be, you know, what happened was I, I, I saw these customers coming to me, like I said, a laundry list of issues, and I, I really started off writing a customer education program. I thought I just need to let people know that they have to address, you know, what they're eating and how they're moving their body, and that's how it started. 
Um, but then what it did is it led into a, a state of self-reflection where I started thinking to myself, why is it that, you know, here I am 50 years old and I have greater physical health, emotional health, financial health, you know, relational health, you know, spiritual health than at any other time in my life. Why is it that I had dealt with 25 years of chronic skin issues and now my skin at 50 years old looks better than it's ever looked, you know, and I realized that the answer to this question was important. Because if the answer was that I was just lucky, well then, and you know, it sucks to be you and it's it's (laughs) great to be me. But if the answer was that I had made certain choices and that I could teach other people how to make those same choices, well, then there's hope there because that means that abundance is available for everybody. And the more that I reflected on it, the more that uh, what stood out to me, I'm a Christian and what stood out to me was a verse in the Bible, John 10, 10. And that says that the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that I might, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And I realized that I had just taken hold of that truth. I believed it. And I started applying principles that I had learned. And the more that I applied them, the more abundance I achieved. Amen to that. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's a great, that's a great verse. Um, so real quick, if you guys want to take advantage of Kimberly's course, uh, she gave a special offer. Uh, you get 25, uh, 20, 20% off. If you put the promo code Freddie, does it have to be all caps? Either or it doesn't matter. So Freddie, uh, the links will be in the show notes and other ways to get a hold of Kimberly will be in the show notes. Make sure you go there, uh, take a look at her course. And honestly, if you, uh, are interested in essential oils, she has those that, uh, you can buy from her as well. But also, if you want to join her team and grow that way and potentially uh, get some financial um, residual income, I love residual income. It's fantastic. <laughs> then, uh, and if you don't know what residual income is, you, pay, you probably pay uh, Netflix every month. That's residual income. So you get paid monthly. That's what residual income is. So definitely, you want to go ahead and contact her that way. But that will all be in the show notes. So make sure you go there and then use the promo code Freddie to get 20% off. So now it's time for our super hyper fast Q and a round. Oh, Are you ready, Kimberly? I don't know. Okay. So, okay. Concentrate. <laughs> okay. Nothing, nothing, major, nothing major, just some fun questions. All so right. if you, here's number one, if you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? <laughs> Not worn a mask. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> um, would you rather sweat melted cheese or have snakes for hair? Gosh. <laughs> um, that's, t- that's tricky. I think I'd rather have snakes for hair. I think that that's pretty epic. Yeah, I would not want to smell sweat no. melted cheese. That's disgusting. And I am dairy free, so you know I'm not food <laughs> free as far as I know. <laughs> if you could time travel, where would you go? What year, or and where would you go? Where would I go? <laughs> I know where I go. I'd go back to creation and just tell Eve, put the damn apple down. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a great answer. Don't do it. But don't she, do it. But would she listen? Would she listen? I don't know. And then you would throat punch the snake, right? Right, yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, Seinfeld, The Office, Friends, or Big Bang Theory? Which one is your favorite? Oh, you are going to hate this answer. I don't watch TV, so I don't really know anything. I had a gut feeling you were going to say that. I don't know I, any of them. Here's the thing. If, if I were to, I, I watch, back when I was in the car business, Seinfeld got me through a lot of, uh, it just made me laugh. But yes, I don't watch a lot of TV too, but nine times out of ten, people say, I don't watch TV. That's hilarious. These successful people, right? Yeah, I you just know? don't watch TV, you know, and it's it's crazy because... Uh, like my wife, she loves watching TV. She's like, you want to watch this with me? And, and I'm like, I'm going to do over here. It doesn't <laughs> thrill me, but if I were to pick as everybody knows me, it's Seinfeld. But Seinfeld. so you've Seinfeld. never watched any of those, any episodes of any of those shows? Not that I know of. Now I do. I did have somebody tell me, and I think it's friends, but I had somebody tell me that they were, I reminded them of the lady who sang smelly cat. Is that, <laughs> is that from friends? I don't Phoebe. know. Phoebe. Yeah, Phoebe. Phoebe. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> So, yes, smelly cat, smelly cat. Okay, so 
one last shout out to the Freddie O Show fam that you can feel that you feel can have an impact on them right now. They can take this information and run with it to change their outlook. One final thought. One final thought. The final thought I believe I want to share is this. There is hope. I feel like no matter what you're going through, no matter you know what trials are ahead, no matter how big your dreams are that seem so impossible, if you believe that, there, that it's possible, that there's hope, the human spirit is able to overcome so much. There is great things within you. There are so much possibility within you. There is hope. Grab hold to hope and you're going to be able to overcome. Beautiful. Kimberly Melosis, thank you so much for being on the Freddie O Show. It's been such a privilege. Thank you so much. You're a rock star. Oh.